this is Kirk. And this is Bird. It's the Kirk and Bird Show. And we are blessed to have with us today Coach Bobby Roman II of Florida Memorial University. He's homegrown 757, played at UNC, and he just got the job there. And we are just blessed to have you on the show. Thanks for joining us, Coach. Man, thank you guys for having me. I'm blessed to be on, you know, blessed to be representing the 757 all the way here from here from Miami Gardens, Florida. So thank you guys for inviting me on. No, it took a while for us to link up, but it's been a crazy month. I'm glad to be here. So thank you. Oh, yeah. We're, yeah, we're yeah, happy to get a lot going on these last couple of months, man. Well, man, it's been, man, look, I, it's been crazy. It's been crazy. Look, I, <laughs> I, I, I've had my, I had, a, I had my daughter to start the month, you know, to start the month of June off. And my daughter had birthdays, you know. Unfortunately, lost my nephew in between that. It was just oh, a lot going on, God. man. So, yeah, man. So, uh, and on top of that, I was trying to move my family down to Miami. So, you know, you know, and I didn't even talk about anything about football or running a program at the same time, you know, first 45 days on the job and stuff like that. So, it was just a lot going on. But, you know, thankful that we got through it. You know, my wife, she's a soldier. She helped. She definitely stepped up at, uh, in some big time moments and held us down. So I'm just thankful to finally be up on the show with you guys and be able to kind of, you know, talk a little bit and uh, share some stories, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, we were talking, you're at Florida Memorial, which is an NAI school, uh, Miami Gardens, you know, right in the thick of things. I was looking at uh, Miami Northwestern, uh, Booker T, all the programs that are close to you. Saw that, uh, what is it, Santana Moss is out of Miami Gardens, Sonoris Moss is out of Miami Gardens. You go a few miles from there. So, you know, you're in the middle of football hotbed. Um, you're, you're only 35 years old, and this is your second head coaching stint. So, why don't you get us a little familiar with uh, Florida Memorial and the opportunity that I know you're excited because you'll be putting on the pads here very soon, Coach. For sure. Well, I mean, I know it's going to blow your mind, but this is actually my fourth head coaching extent. You oh, know, we, 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 yeah. oh, we're going to have some fun talking about Russia. <laughs> I was actually the head coach. I mean, people forget, I was also the head coach at Virginia University of Lynchburg. Yeah, Virginia University of Lynchburg. Lynchburg. That's yeah, right. So I'm proud of you becoming a head That's coach. That's right. Uh, yep. Central State, so... Uh, you know, I had a few couple stops. You know, I was JV head coach at UNC. You know, same position Hubert Davis held for the basketball program. Uh, wow. coach blessed me with that opportunity. So I was very thankful for that, you know, to kind of get my feet wet when I first got back to Russia. So that was, you know, yeah. So I, I kind of been around the block as far as the head coaches. It's, it's crazy, you know, when I talk about when I, you know, talking to my staff and stuff. And speaking of Santana Moss and my staff, um, excuse me, his cousin. His first cousin is our offensive coordinator. So, oh, cool. Mike oh, Jones, yeah, yeah, Mike Jones, yeah. So, uh, you know, it was it was crazy. My first week on a job um, at FMU, I had a reference call from Moss. You know, I had a reference call, reference call from Sonora. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you had a reference. <laughs> yeah, I had a reference call from him. Man, this is, I mean, this, you know, this is Miami, man. I mean, it is. Big city living, man. I mean, yeah. you you'd be surprised how you stumble across. Like I said, I had a, had a yeah. reference call from from uh, uh, Moss that played that Plaxy played for the Redskins. So it was it was cool, man. It was like, wow, this dude want to talk want to talk to me. All right, you know, it was it was funny. So right. So this is a new chapter, and you're in. You know, there's no other area like South Florida that produces football players, and um, you're as we discussed off camera. Um, the university had, uh, a, a, they didn't have football for 62 years. Yeah, 62 year hiatus. Yeah, we had a 62 right. year hiatus for football. So take it, take it from there, like how it started and then where you are now and looking forward to starting practice. Well, of course, in South Florida, you know, we're, we're us being the only HBCU in South Florida. I mean, you know, football lives and breathes down there in South Florida. They do it for you. <laughs> They do it four years around. I mean, four seasons a year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they start when their kids come out to come out the womb. You know, playing <laughs> football. So, you know, to, to not have a football program at uh, you know FMU was something that President Hardrick, uh, uh, the prior AD, uh, uh, AD Jones. You know, they, they did a great job kind of jump starting this thing and getting going in the right direction. And then uh, AD Jason Horn came in and kind of started getting this thing started started in the right direction. So we basically started with Ice Harris as the head football coach, legendary uh, Miami, you know, 
South Florida coach, man. I mean, he is the biggest name in South Florida, you know what I mean? Um, and he did a damn good job, you know, getting the program started, you know, the resources that was that his program was able that, that he left this program with and uh, the shape that he left the program with. You know, it was kind of a blessing for me to come in and kind of take the job after his uh, second year. So, um, you know, a lot of people don't get a blessed with opportunity to kind of walk in a position like that and, you know, especially getting a position in South Florida, you know, it's, and I, when I first got into coaching, I've heard a lot of coaches say, you know, you always want, you know, you want that job in Florida. You know, they always talk about you want that job in Florida. And, you know, so when that opportunity came about, especially being, you know, in South Florida, you know, same place, you know, um, I have people that I'm very familiar with, like Coach Davis and stuff like that. I thought, man, why not, you know, why not me down there in South Florida, you know, where the football and they live and live, live, eat, breathe football. So, I mean, thought it'd be a perfect match. And, you know, here we are today, you know, I'm here, you know, I was named the head football coach back in April and, you know, I'm just, I was thankful for the opportunity. Uh, they went through, a, you know, a very thorough search process and uh, throughout the search process, I guess I was the one they decided to select. And, uh, you know, I had some, some, some very good people speak up on my behalf in reference to me landing this opportunity, you know, like coach, like coach Davis, you know, like, a, you know, who was the former head football coach at the University of Miami. Uh, Florida International, Cleveland Browns, and also my, my former college head coach. Uh, also, um, Eric Henderson, who was the uh, defensive line coach of the year, uh, 2000, 2002, 2022 defensive line coach of the year for the uh, from the Rams. Uh, just won a Super Bowl. He was uh, he's actually, um, you know, he's the best defensive line coach in the NFL. You know, and then you got Coach Betty, who uh, interviewed for um, offensive coordinator jobs in the NFL, who's currently the wide receiver coach for the LA Chargers, uh, speak up on my behalf as well. So I couldn't, I wouldn't be in the position I am today if it wasn't for those references and uh, those guys speaking up and, you know, feeling like I was somebody that was able to take position. And also Mr. Keith Tribble as well. He, he played a big role and also A.D. Horn and uh, President Harvey blessing me with the opportunity. So it's a dream come true, man. I never in a million years thought I'd be, you know, in Miami coaching football. And I, you know, even when I started, you know, it started the process starting. I'm like, man, how many head coaches are between here and Ohio? You know what I mean? And, you know, I guess, <laughs> you know, hey, they decided they chose me and I'm, I'm thankful. And, you know, we got the ball rolling. We landed some outstanding recruits. Uh, and, you know, just, and like South Florida is an easy place to recruit, you know, and, um, you know, we love, we, we got a beautiful campus. Um, we're starting to uh, mark, open this thing up a little bit. Uh, what I mean by that, you know, only people in South Florida kind of knew about FMU. So uh, we want to kind of expand the brand outside of Florida. So we, we started recruiting outside of Florida as well and uh, kind of opening up our brand to, you know, the rest of the United States and saying, hey, we play good football down here. Uh, we don't believe in level football. Like what I mean, I don't believe in level football, meaning that, you know, we play division ones here. We got, we got Southern University on the schedule. You got Southern on the yeah. schedule. Yeah, yeah we, we start, to, start the season off with Edwards Water, which is a division two uh, program. So, I mean, we love playing up. We, you know, we love playing those games. So, uh, you know, challenging our young men because we play in a very, very tough conference. You know, playing a tough conference. So, and the resources some of those programs have in that conference, you know, uh, F and you decide to match them. You know what I mean? I'm happy about that as a head football coach. And, you know, when you look at some of the top programs like Kaiser, Amaria, and uh, also um, Southeastern, you know, those programs are loaded with talent, great coaches, got full staffs. And I'm just thankful that the Florida Memorial uh, blessed me with the same. So, man, coach, it, it, so it's a lot right there I want to unpack. All right. So, Florida Memorial, you're right. I hadn't heard of it, but I'm I'm glad to know that the, that the program was just revived after because I was like, what, what am I missing? I, I, I pride myself in knowing sports. Then also not knowing it was an HBCU. So like this this pops up on my radar. I, I you know clearly I love sports, but like I'm on the message board for like SWAC. Um, you know, swag sports and all this stuff. And, and that's right. why I'm glad to see that you're playing Southern. But I have a question for you. I was going to save it until later, but I want to ask you now. So, you know, Hampton University, a t they left the MEAC. They went to the Southern Conf, the Big Stoke, the Big South. Big South. And now the they South. just went into the Colonial Athletic, okay? Right. And then there was recent uh, discussion about um, the MEAC maybe breaking up and it all joining the SWAC and, and maybe having just one big, like these other kind of like the, like the SEC is doing and all that. But I, this is the, the root of my question is this, Coach. 
I got a problem with the MEAC playing the SWAC and calling that the Black College National Championship. That that don't that don't sound right to me. When you got Florida Memorial, you got all the CIAA schools, Central, I mean, where you are like, Stay. how yep. can it be the Black College National Championship if you ain't really inviting everybody? What's your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, I'm definitely, I'm going to tell you, man, I'm, I'm glad somebody said it. <laughs> hey, you know what? I, I think it'd be, you know, I think it'd be something very cool to open it up to every, you know, every every division I'm talking about. Um, you know, the CIAA, the SIAC, you know, over, give give Winkson down there a shot down there in uh, Oklahoma, give us a shot down there in Miami, you know, coming out of NAI programs. I mean, uh, you know, I, I just think it'll, it'll, it'll do well for every, every university's brand. And, you know, the, it's, and who knows, man? Look, we've seen SIAC and CIAA teams upset the and SWAC team. So, you know, oh, yeah. who knows? Yeah. Any given day, you know, it can happen. And truth be told, you know, any game we go into, you know, we're not we're not looking to lay down for anybody. You know, anybody we play, you know, don't matter if it's HBCU or, you know, some team from our conference, you know, we're going to go out there and play them, you know. So I would love I would love something like that, you know. Just because, and I'm just speaking because, you know, I, I, I truly understand – you know, just coming from an NAIA, you know, what what it means to my young men to play on play at that level, man. Come on, playing the celebration bowl coming from South Florida, man, that would be awesome. Man, man. That would be awesome. I, 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 I tell you what, um, and, and to your point, look, it don't matter what division you are, when Virginia State plays Norfolk State, it don't matter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like big state, little state, <laughs> you know, it's yeah, gonna be it it doesn't, man. Like I said, I've been going to those games many years, man. Like I said, it never yeah. mattered. You know, Virginia State's going to go out there and feel like they can beat them. You know what I mean? So, you know, that's it's always a good game, always makes for a good rivalry. You also got to look at some of those games down there with Miles. You know, Miles goes toe to toe with AM yeah. every year. I mean, uh, Alabama State every single year, you know, and, yeah. you know, you got to look at that, man. And, and also look at, uh, you know, Kentucky State, they upset at Jackson State before Deion took over their program. So, you know, there there are some teams out there that can compete at that level. You know, it's just, you know, giving them the opportunity. But for us, you know, at FMU, our focus is, you know, winning a national championship at FMU. I know we're in South Florida, man. You know what I mean? We're in South Florida. You know, this is where the talent is at. And I really, I truly feel like that. And I feel like, you know, we, we recruiting wise, you know, who doesn't want to come to South Beach? You know, you can, I mean, let's be real. You know, you're outside four seasons out the year. Uh, you can't ask for that anywhere else in the country. You got the beaches, you know, you got uh, all the NFL players come here to train. So you got the mentorship mm -hmm. going on here. Tyreek Hill's right down the street from our practice. Yeah, field. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, it's funny. I see, you know, when I'm, when I'm watching him online, you know, on social media, he's literally running around on our practice field sometimes. So, you Man. know, like, yeah, so we got, so I'm just telling you, I mean, who wouldn't want to come here? You know, we're two minutes from the Miami Dolphins Stadium. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I was going to say, you can walk to one of my, go one of my, one, one of my goals, and that's, like I said, as a head coach, and it's got to be one of my goals. I got to get one of those guys to come out there and check out my guys. I got to mm -hmm. get a program. I got to get a program up to snuff mm -hmm. for them to be able to make that two-minute trip down the road. So, you know, we're working on that right now. And like I said, we're going to put together a great product at FMU. And, you know, I, and hopefully so in the near future, we compete for national championship there. Right. Look, let's take a a step back because you talk about this is your fourth. So I was going to say, let's go. Yeah, let's, let's go let's, back. Let's not go all you know the way back because we want to talk about North Carolina and he's a Grammy Comet also. No, Dex, no, no. I, yeah, I want to go. We'll go back, back to that. But what I want to do is talk about over across to Dallas Stadium. I want to. We'll get all back to that. Hold on. But but this guy. Other sport. This we'll get to that. But he's been in Saint Petersburg, Russia. And also Vladivostok, but which is just above, I hope I said it right, but it's just above North Korea. And yeah. first of all, St. Petersburg is near Finland. So I know you right. froze your tail off. And then yeah. I looked at Vladivostok and I said, oh, that wasn't that cold. But then I looked up the weather. It is cold there. Oh. <laughs> right. So let's go back to like, Let's because we, we've got a lot of fun stuff to talk about with Norfolk, and the, uh, North Carolina, and some of those things. Um, but talk about your professional career 
And uh, then we'll go back to the 757 uh, because you played in a great period of time uh, back in the uh, the Eastern region. Oh, for sure. Well, um, as far as my professional career, you know, how I got over to Russia, you know, I played football. You know, I was a football player. So originally I went, I was, uh, you know, I was just got out of the United Football League. And um, that league, I felt like it was on the verge of folding. So uh, I wanted to do something different. Immediately, uh, I had a friend that was already overseas playing. And at the time, to be honest, money wasn't really the thing, wasn't really an issue for me. It was more of the experience and kind of taking on a new adventure and trying to, you know, play, do, you know, finish out my professional football career. You know what I mean? So I went over to Russia and, and thank God, they, I mean, to be honest, they, they took care, took great care of me. You know what I mean? It took great care of me. You know, they, you know, they, they paid me a livable salary. I'll be honest. You know what I mean? Uh, I, they took great care of me, especially with me being the only American on the, on the roster at the time. And I'll be honest, football kind of blew up really fast there. You know, as soon as I arrived, kind of just took off. And uh, immediately I was, you know, going around in different cities in Russia. You know, I started off in Moscow. I played with the Moscow Patriots. And while I was there, I would go off and do master classes in different cities and, like, develop football. You right. know, literally develop football, you know, do master classes, you know, all those Shepherds, Nizinagate, you know, different places, St. Petersburg. And that's how I ended up going to St. Petersburg next. But, you know, just to, to stay with Moscow for a second. Um, while I was there, you know, I, I was invited over to come over to play football. Um, they found out I played quarterback in high I found out I played quarterback in high school and I actually went to college as a quarterback. So, you know, they wanted me to come over there and play. I'm like, why not, man? Shoot, go over there and play, you know, get paid to play football, you know, do something, you know, you know, I get to go over there and just have, you know, just kind of new experience and see where it goes, you know. So what was your big, position over there? I played quarterback. Position? I'm you play quarterback. Play quarterback. So you, yeah, I'm quarterback. Yeah, I play quarterback. So, you mean, you got to understand I me. Mean, you know, I wasn't forced out of the quarterback position at Carolina. You know what I mean? I just wanted to play. I just wanted to get on the field really fast. So, yeah. you know, I went three for four at Carolina for 125 yards, one touchdown. Yeah, so, you What's know. That, I, that's a passer rating of like 100 yeah, and something, man. Yeah, I, got, I got the highest passer rate in Carolina history. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, so I, I, I can spend that thing a little bit. So, you know, going over there to play quarterback was very enticing. I went over there, I played, did very well, man. And uh, by the middle of the season, you know, it's this big showdown. And next thing you know, this guy is like literally offering Tim Tebow. I don't know if you guys remember this, offering Tim Tebow a million dollars to come over to Russia to play against me. Wow. You can you can Google this. Like, yeah, you can Google this right now as we speak. You can put Tim Tebow, one million dollars right. Russia. And like they were talking about it on ESPN. Uh, uh, first take, I don't know if this is a show still. Skip, you, them used to be on talking about the million dollars that was offered to uh, Tim Tebow to go over there and play in Russia. That game was against was against me. Right. Uh, what uh, ended up happening is Tim Tebow. He didn't want that seven five seven smoke. That's what it was. <laughs> nah, he, he ended up declining because he was trying to get back into the league and stuff. And uh, yeah. and they ended up bringing in guys from all over the, the world to play and stuff. And it was a good game. Mm -hmm. You know, I went out there played against. It was a big showcase. Uh, a lot of people in the stands. It's a national televised game, and the sport kind of took off in that country from there. And from there, I kind of went from uh, Moscow with St. Petersburg. You know, better place, better. You know, better. You know, I got better, better place to live. You know, more money and stuff. Right. It, it got kind of crazy. You know, um, I got. You know, I started going to more master classes. It was more. I guess this this you know going to St. Petersburg. They had an actual plan. Now they actually had a plan out for how they were going to do this. You know, I came over there, you know, I was working with a university and stuff and they were starting a football program and stuff. And, uh, you know, but this, but they were actually doing it at, uh, this is crazy, you know, at a fire department. So this is the university like that, you know, produced firefighters and stuff. And, you know, using, you know, I guess football was like some of the extracurricular activities and stuff. And they were using the university resources and stuff. So, that gave the uh, university all the way in Vladivostok. That's that's how you pronounce it. Vladivostok. <laughs> I uh, tried. Right. That gave Far East Federal University, which the school this is the school where President Vladimir Putin built, you know, with his own money. You know what I mean? He gifted this school. This school was uh, this campus was basically used for the Far East Exchange. Basically, this is a place where all the, the foreign leaders and powers come, and basically, you know, they. Uh, meet about, you know, the next moves of the world, I guess. I don't know. Wow. It's like, it is like where the forest is on this campus or whatever in Russia. Right. 
Um, and uh, basically, once that was done in 2012, he gifted this <laughs> university. He gifted this university to uh, Far East Federal University. So um, they turned the school into an international university because they're on the, like you said, they're on the, they're right there, an hour from North Korea, hour from China, two hour flight from uh, Japan, and right. an hour flight from South South Korea. So they turned basically turned this university, and, and, and you got the rest of Russia also. So, you know, they got all these places surrounding him and um, basically they're international university and they was trying to figure out, you know, what was the difference between them and all the international universities in China, Japan, and it was the fact that they had football programs. You know, these universities, uh, yeah, these yeah. universities had football programs and they felt like they can attract more student athletes, well, students in general, by having me come to, you know, come over there and, you know, coach their coach their American football team. So right. uh, I, of course, I, you know, I was 27 years old at the time. I was still, in, I felt like I was still kind of in the midst of my playing career, kind of in the prime of my playing career. And I, I did a lot of praying. And I, I mean, did a lot of praying, you know, saying like, am I going to give up football right now and jump into coaching? And um, I remember something my dad said when I was helping out with Norfolk Christian, you know, the year they won the state championship. But Quanti mm-hmm. Moore and all them guys that yeah, yeah, five guys, yeah. Five guys you know, going like division one. And uh my father was on that coaching staff that won the state championship. And, okay. Uh, yeah, so I helped out preseason with that. That was like my first kind of thing thing in the coaching. Helped out that preseason. And my dad told me then he said, Man, here, I'm here I am an all pro fullback. I'm an all pro fullback in the United Football League, by the way. You know, I was one of the I regarded one of the best fullbacks in the country in college. And my dad watches watch me coach, and he says, "Man, you you might be a better football coach than football player." Oh, <laughs> oh, okay. oh my god! I mean, at the time, it hurt so bad at to hear time. that. Yeah, you like? Oh, it hurt! Oh, it hurt! It hurt so bad to hear that. But that was ringing in my head at 27 years old, and you know, I just kind of just say, you know what, I'm going to retire and hang it up. And, start coaching. And I did, you know, I started coaching. And the funny thing is people don't know this, but you know, when I took a job there, man, they just handed me a football. I'm like, yeah, go, go, go. Like, what yeah. Is this? Yeah. You know, like, what, what are we supposed to do with this? You know what I mean? And they, you know, they had, I had to kind of coach them on how to kind of build a program. Thank God it was an hour from China. So, you know, that's where the equipment was manufactured. So, man, we was literally buying, when them kids were getting equipment right out the back of the day on warehouse. It was crazy, man. Yep. Coach, so, that let me tell you, we could spend a, an episode just on your time in Russia because I, I got I can have a million questions, but let me ask I'll just yeah. do this one. Yeah, what was the talent level like for for those Russian athletes? Now, now look, I I'm let me see, football players. They they might be athletes, but did they come from a, like were they former wrestlers or yeah, they were definitely soccer players? players. Definitely. So they were all former athletes. I mean, they, they were always, all, and most of them were all like probably the top in their competitive, you know, in their competitive right. combat sport or whatever. And they just got bored with it. You know what I mean? Because here, I mean, when I hear where in Russia, you know, typically, you know, they, they do something, they do it their whole entire life. You know what I mean? Right. So they're going to go to school doing this, you know, they're going to do it their whole entire life. So they typically got bored with split with some and they jumped into the next sport and they typically, you know, they it's funny, but they watch YouTube. You know, they watch YouTube. Mm. So they had an idea what American football was, you know, but I had to literally teach them the game. So basically, you know, I had to come there and say, okay, so what if, what if you guys just play? Just play and I'm just gonna start fixing stuff. So I had to literally go around and start fixing stuff. Now great athletes. I mean, great yeah, athletes. Yeah. Oh, I, I bet they were athletes, yeah. The one thing I learned immediately, you know, when you're teaching somebody, like when you're teaching somebody that has literally went to school their whole life to learn a sport or something like that, man, they pick up stuff so fast. You wow. know what I mean? They pick, and, and they were so dedicated to the craft. I mean, like, you know, they were very dedicated. I mean, they spent hours with me, you know what I mean, throughout the day before practice, you know, just going over just chalk talk and stuff like that. So they grew in the sport very fast. And to be honest, their program right now is self-sufficient. They don't need anybody right now. They can run a, a full program by themselves, you know what I mean, with captains leading. Like, that's how militant that program is, you know. And cool. Yeah. Uh, do, do, um, do they – gosh, I, I, I can't remember it now. I'm sorry. I was going to ask you if they – oh, oh, 
has has the popularity grown throughout the country? I know you're starting oh, these. Yeah, man, it's, 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 yeah, football is a big deal in Russia right now. Okay. You know, football, yeah, football is a big deal. You know what I mean? I, like I said, push football was going on way before I arrived in Russia, but I would say I definitely, you know, my time there, I spent three years there. So, you know, definitely spending three years working at something every single day, being a pro former professional football player, it's going to take it to the next level. And it did, you know what I mean? It was, it, it sprang some great notoriety on it. And uh, also, you know, we did, I did master classes all over the country. Like I visited maybe over, over, over 20 different cities in Russia. You know what I mean? This, this development football, I even went to Siberia doing it. So, uh, Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with, with the Siberia, you know, negative, negative 42. Like, it's crazy out there. You know, just developing, you know, developing, teaching and developing football. I mean, they want to learn out there. And I, you know, they, they flew me out there. I had a grant, government grant to go out there and uh, teach the sport I love. So it was fun, man. Like, that that part was like a dream come true, being an ambassador for, the, for, for American football over there. Kirk, I'll let you go after this. I know I'm, I'm hogging up a lot of time. Just well, two other questions. Are you sure? Um, yeah. So did do most did you need a translator or did most of them already speak English? And then my next question is, what, what was your style of offense? It, could, if could you have an effective passing game or did you just line them up and run the ball? Okay, so I, I was okay. So the answer, no, they did not. They, they didn't speak English very well. Um, but I did have translators. School gave me multiple translators, so it was. You know, it's very rare where I'll be without one. You know what I mean? Whether I'm going to the store or whatever, like, I've always, always had a translator. You know, and they they become so close. They become friends. You know what I mean? So it was like I couldn't go anywhere without. I got to the point where I was kind of handicapped. Where I couldn't go nowhere without them. Then I learned how to speak Russian a little bit as well. So okay, uh, yeah. I mean, you were there for three years. You're gonna learn how to speak Russian. You know what I mean? So uh, mm -hmm. learn how to speak speak the language a little bit and. Uh, as far as offense we ran, man, we, we kind of mixed it up a little bit. We ran some power high, then we spread it out. And once they kind of got good at that, we kind of, and I trust them, you know, little short, easy concepts, like smash and stuff like that. We Then we kind of spread it out. You know, we kind of spread out four wide. Thank God. Okay. Thank God one of the captains on the team, favorite player was Tom Brady. So he, <laughs> I, so he, I mean, when I tell you, he studied this guy night in and night out. I mean, everything he did, you know, so it was, I mean, it was easy kind of starting from him, you know what I mean? Start using him as my, my, my focal point and my translator at all times. So when the quarterback is kind of that guy, you know, it made it a lot easier. So, and like okay. I said, I played, I actually played over there. So when I was over there playing yeah, right. you know, and playing quarterback, you understand nobody, Nobody spoke, you know, nobody, nobody spoke English when I was speaking to him in the huddle. But I still, I mean, every, <laughs> every play was in English, you know what I mean? So wow. that I made them, they literally learned the language, you know, mm -hmm. for me. So I figured now I'm, I got to do the same thing for them. So it worked. Great. So you, you finished up um, in Vyadostok, which was, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And by the way, I mean, that was a town of about six, seven hundred thousand people. It was a port, yeah. and it was the eastern terminus of the uh, Trans-Siberia Railroad. But you went back to the Raleigh-Durham area, and I that's did. where you got you were working. You got involved with the freshman team, yeah. Uh, and then that's where your American career. So let's go, let's switch over to let's go through you know the opportunities that you got there. Uh, North Carolina. I, 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 I just want to start. Wait, can we start from the very beginning? I don't want to keep going, but. Let's start from the beginning. When did you play football and youth football, middle school? Can you do that for us, Kirk? I just want to—I don't want to keep trying to go backwards. So let's go back and go forward. Okay. Well, I started off playing youth football with the uh, the Western Dukes in Largemouth. So um, there was a program where you know my dad kind of started off coaching me. You know what I mean? He was a big influence on my my career, uh, he started off coaching me. And one thing my dad always taught me, you know, learn every position. I don't care if it's offensive line, defensive line, learn how to snap, learn how to, you know, learn everything. So he taught me every single position from, you know, four years old on up. So uh, I came, I guess I came to the game, you know, mentally just, you know, knowing the game on a whole nother level to my dad being a coach. Um, mm -hmm. I left, at the youth league, I kind of jumped right into uh, Atlantic Shores. I went kind of like right in the Atlantic. It was no middle school football. So, oh, okay. Yeah, it was no middle school football. So 
I kind of jumped into Atlantic Shores where you can play junior varsity in seventh grade. Uh, my parents were kind of way ahead of the game before then, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Of course, had a weightlifting program and stuff like that. So they were like way ahead of the game. Like they were way ahead of this stuff. So uh, I was actually at Atlantic Shores in seventh grade and uh, I ended up <laughs> I ended up breaking my ankle playing baseball. Yeah, the, right before, yeah, right before the season. It was, it was. My dad was like, could not believe it. He couldn't believe it. Uh, broke my ankle playing baseball. Uh, I was actually going to play. Probably end you know, up playing varsity as a seventh grader, wide receiver. Uh, yeah, and um, so you know, started playing junior varsity basketball at Atlantic Shores in the seventh grade and stuff. Playing up. That's when I got kind of got used to playing up. You know, my dad was like. You know, I play JJV, but I always would play JV. You know what I mean? So I will always play up. Uh, once I spent that one year at Atlantic Shores, um, uh, my dad, you know, told me that, you know, we, we lived in the Grammy District anyway, but I never knew that my dad actually knew um, Coach Hudak, who was actually my father's running back coach in high school. Oh, wow. <laughs> at Norfolk Catholic. Yeah, so mm – -hmm. My, my father played in Norfolk Catholic. He wrestled, state champion, wrestler, and all that stuff. So, uh -huh. yeah. So, um, he, uh, you know, he told me you're going to Granby High School or whatever. My sister's going to, here's the thing my sister's graduated from Maury High School. Mm -hmm. <laughs> same household, everything. Lived in the same household, and everything. So, I thought I was going to Maury. I always thought I was going to Maury. And mm -hmm. I ended up going, to, yeah, my dad said, you're going to Granby High School. And uh, I remember going out there as an eighth grader and, um, you know, throwing the ball and stuff, and you know, I'm throwing against all the quarterbacks and stuff, and I'm sitting there waiting. Like, when is the varsity quarterback gonna show up? You know what I mean? And, <laughs> and, uh, Coach Hudak went over to my dad and said, "Yeah, man, you know, we might go ahead and start him on varsity as a ninth. You know, go ahead and start him on varsity." Coach, <laughs> my dad was like, "Coach, he's only in the eighth grade." And, and, <laughs> and uh, Hudak was like, "What?" He's only in the eighth grade. Like, hold on, man. Like, this can't be right. You know what I mean? And um, so I spent the first year on JV, man. You know, dominated JV at Granby High School. I played every single position on the field, man. Dominated the junior varsity as an eighth grader. Uh, with the junior play bar, started as a varsity as a quarterback four years. Wow. Uh, yeah, I came in. I came in. Started a quarterback. Went eight and two that year. My freshman year, we had Le yeah, man. I had Levi Brown as offensive tackle. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, Levi, yeah. yeah I, had, I had NFL guys. I had DJ Yancey yep. in the backfield who played at University of Tennessee. You know, he was, we walked on, but he actually played. He stole some carries for Adrian Foster and stuff. So, uh, but we didn't have any. We didn't have any receivers. We ended up moving the quarterback. That was a start. okay. So the quarterback the previous year was Terrence Meeks. Uh, and he was a good quarterback. I mean, he led him to a seven and three record. And but I was determined to be the starting quarterback. So I came in and beat him out. And we won one extra game that year. We went eight and two and uh lost the district championship. The Norview didn't go to the playoffs, which is unbelievable when you think about <sighs> the landscape of, of high school football now. Uh, now, yeah. Yeah, man. And uh and I made all conference, made all conference. Uh, my my honorable, honorable mention, all you know, all district and stuff as a, you know, as a freshman and stuff. Didn't even know that. I, the funny thing, I didn't even know anything about that stuff. Like I wasn't even like didn't even know about all district. It, like these kids know all that stuff now. But I didn't even yeah, know. What yeah. the heck, I didn't know what the heck that was. You know what I mean? Like oh okay, all right, whatever. You know what I mean? Made, yeah. all, made honorable mention all district, but I made first team all district every year after that. Um, I committed to Carolina the summer before my uh, senior year started. Um, had offers from a lot of from a lot of different programs coming out of high school. Um, I was blessed with a with a with a great wide receiver. You know what I mean? With some great talent around me. I uh, uh, Kirk Bell Graves who played at Kent State, who was outstanding talent. You know, playing up playing for uh, uh, Falcons for a little bit, and also um, Chris Bell, five star wide receiver. Uh, and went ended up at Penn State and broke ended up breaking receiving records at Norfolk State. Um, so mm. I, I was yeah, I was blessed with a plethora of talent, you know, around surrounding me. You know, Deion McLean was, you know, he had the state record for a uh, triple jump. So we had like a plethora of athletes around us. So I mean, you know, I would, all I had to do was put the ball in their hands and they would just take it in the rest of the way. So I ended up being Norfolk's all time leading passer, holding that record for a number of years until uh, they got a wow. DJ. So yeah, DJ Matt came through and kind of knocked me off the stratosphere a little bit. So, now, yeah. did you play in the era um, with Aaron Sparrow? 
No. I did not. I did not play with oh, Aaron Spurrow. Oh, you with Phil Sims? Ah, uh, Phil Sims, he was I, was I was in between them. I was way in between them. So yeah. I played. So when I played, uh I played with Percy Harvin and them. So Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I played I played at Percy Harvin's Greg Boone's era. That that does those that, yes. that, 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 yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. Um, so, real quick, North Carolina is a great place. We were talking before we got on here about how many Virginia athletes they get, not just in the seven five seven, but Richmond and Northern Virginia. Um, what was it about North Carolina? Because there's a lot of North Carolina fans here in Virginia. Well, I would say, what was it about, man? You know, number one, they were very so. I, I played all sports in high school. I played baseball. I played. Uh, basketball, I ran track, you know what I mean? I was a four-sport athlete in high school. One thing I, that was very attractive to North Carolina, they let their athletes play multiple sports. Mm -hmm. so yeah. That was very attractive. Even if I wasn't going to try, I, I just, just the openness to allow people to play multiple sports um, was, was one. Um, Peppers. Peppers, Peppers played. Peppers, you know what I mean? They had guys, a few guys that played baseball and football as well. So, you know, it was – Marion Jones ran track, played basketball, you know what yeah. I mean? Right, a legacy of allowing student athletes to play multiple sports. So it was something that was very intriguing to me. On top of that, you know, looking at you know me coming in as a quarterback, Dan Durant, his stature, you know yeah. what I mean? Me and was about the same stature and size, and they gave him an opportunity over the number one player in the country. So I felt like, man, you know, if they gave him the opportunity and he was a you know no star guy out of high school, then you know they definitely give me a shot. So you know, and, and to be honest, I, I just fell in love with it. You know, when I got to Chapel Hill, I mean, it felt like home. Was three hours away from you know, three, three and a half hours away yep. from home. My parents can get to me pretty quick. You know, yep. home if I needed to jump, you know, drive home real quick. Um, also, the campus was just, you know, it felt like it was in a whole different world. You know what I mean? And and I guess it was, it was the academic standard as well. You know what I mean? It, that, the academic standard mm -hmm. that came along with being, you know, and the reputation, you know, being a Carolina alumni, that was the things that was very intriguing to me. And it was like, you know what, uh, you know, this school, Offers, I'm gonna I'm jump all over it because you know they, you know they check too many boxes and you know thank God you know I had a, you know I had a father that was you know giving me great advice at the time you know it was like hey you know what that's a program you might want to take a look at so I jumped all over it. Yeah, I was looking at uh, the year you came out uh, was a big year in Virginia. Oh yeah, twenty of the top twenty five players went to Tech or UVA and, and Tech got the lion's share. That was Macho Harris, um, uh, Vic Hall. Uh, yeah, so I think Greg Boone was that year. Right, right. Yeah, a lot yeah. of really, really good players. Um, and um, you know, going down to North Carolina, you uh, you followed Dexter Reed, who was an right, incredible right. player from Morehead. That's another thing. You know, Dexter was a big, huge influence on me, man. Going through, you know, coming up through high school and stuff, and why he actually made it to the NFL. You know. Yep. So, Here's another situation, you know, I, I went to go see Dexter play, you know, a college football game, man. And he was on, I mean, he was on the front page of the program. This is somebody that went to high school, you know, went to the same high school I went to. So that was like a huge influence to see Dexter, you know, come out the tunnel, you know, be on the front of the, you know, all the, you know, in front of the guys and programs and stuff. And, you know, to see Dexter go, you know, go off to the NFL, you know, and then, you know, for him to be, you know, have we met him to have a relationship we've had where, you know, he'll pick up the phone and call me you know, check up on me and stuff like that. And I just, I'll never forget some of the stuff, some of the advice he gave me, like, um, for example, um, and this is kind of funny, my freshman year, you know, I told him I wanted to go to Carolina and all that stuff. So, I, you know, my freshman year in Carolina, you know, I'm there now. I mean, I'm in, I'm in the mess, you know what I mean? I'm in it now. <laughs> Working out, you know, workouts is hard as hell, you know what I mean? It, it's going crazy. So, <sighs> Dexter called me to check on me, like, yo, man, what up, man? How you doing? And I'm like, I'm good, I'm good, you know, just trying to find some sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Dexter said, man, look, man, sleep in the way. I said, what? You know, like, what kind of mentality is that? So I knew then my mentality wasn't in the right place. You know, I had to get my mind right. You know what I mean? Like, I had to get my, I had to start thinking like him. You know, he was telling me, man, sleep, you know, he played in the NFL, so he's saying, Man, sleep in a, sleep is in a way. So basically, he's saying basically like, he if he didn't have to sleep, he wouldn't sleep. He wouldn't sleep if he had to sleep. So now <laughs> you know, I'm kind of you know. Ever since then, I kind of been on that same mission, man. Like you know, I don't 
I, I try to get a good night. I try to get a good night's rest, but for the most part, I work, you know, I work, 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 yeah. work, work because of that, because, you know, that it showed me that somebody else is just on a whole different level than I was. And when you're thinking about grinding, you know, I thought I was grinding. I was a freshman dying. I felt like I was getting my behind kicked every day. I thought I was grinding. He was like, what, man? I do this with no sleep, you know? And I was like, okay, <laughs> I, I got to get right. I got to get right. So, so. So you make the move from quarterback to fullback. Is that right? Yeah. How how does that happen? And, so, and look, so, so wait a minute, because I just want to say this, Bobby. You, you follow in my, my footsteps. I was the quarterback at Bethel on JV. Right. And then okay. when I got to varsity, Jason Wallace kind of ran the show. And then I played fullback for two more years. But go ahead. <laughs> got you. So it, it, it's a number of things that kind of help with that transition a little bit. Um, when I okay, so I wanted to play. You know, I looked at the quarterback room that I was in, and uh, at the time we had an offensive coordinator that came in from Fresno State named Frank Signetti. Uh, Frank Signetti is currently the OC at uh, Pitt. So me and Frank are really good, really, really close. By the way, really good. So you know, I try to throw a dig at him, but just saying this is what this is what happened. You know, um, our, his first our first quarterback meeting. You know, we come in the room. Uh, it was Joe Daly, who was a Nebraska transfer at the time, who was, a wide, who was currently the wide receiver coach for uh, the Carolina Panthers. And it's, <clears throat> and it's uh, Cam Sexton that was also the, the, two, the, two, the two top quarterbacks. I was meddling, I was meddling kind of in the number three position, you know what I mean, kind of third, third, third string at the time. And uh, basically, uh, we're sitting at the table. Uh, now, he told Cam and Joe, and it's the other three quarterbacks are over here as well. So we got five quarterbacks in the room, by the way. So he tells Cam and Joe to sit on the other side of the table. Basically, they're facing the board. They're facing the the, the screen, the chalkboard. They told us to face towards them and don't turn around. They said, <laughs> uh, this is, they said our job is to watch them. That's what they told us. <laughs> they, said, you they make a mistake. That's the, You learn from that. You know, that, that was our like, – like, we won't want to take no reps. We won't supposed to, you know, answer no questions in the meeting. We just want to sit there and watch them like this. Watch them raise their hand and get ready for the season and stuff. So I didn't like that too bad, man. So the first time Coach Nettie walked out the room, I said, man, I said, I don't know about the rest of y'all, but uh, I think I can start another position on this team. And everybody looked at me like, you crazy. So I go upstairs. And so right after the meeting and stuff, you know, I, I go through – to me in a few practices. So I go up to Coach Bunny and I ask Coach Bunny, I said, Coach Bunny, you know, what do you think about me, you know, changing positions? Coach Bunny looks at me and say, right now you're my third string quarterback. No, I'm not third, you know, you know, right now you're battling for the job. You're number three right now. Anything can happen. You lose, you know, he's giving me all these scenarios. So I go back downstairs and I, as I'm going downstairs, I walk past the running back room and I'm like, man, I just jump in the I jump in the meeting room, right? So I just go and sit down. <laughs> I go and sit down or whatever. Coach Powell's like, oh, they put you, they finally moved you over here, right? So, Bingo, I know they've been, they probably been talking about it and so probably, probably thought I was shaped like a running back. Anyway, but you got to understand, this is the era of Woodrow Dantzler, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, Darren Durant, you know, Michael Vick, like all of us are shaped like running backs, you know what I mean? So, this is like that that era of quarterback. So, that Donovan McNabb, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? That's just like the era yep. of quarterbacks at the time. So, um, you know, he so basically, you know, I, I meet with Coach Powell to the, after the running back meeting because we're going to go out to practice now. And I say, yeah, uh, Coach Bunny don't want me to move the running back, but I want to kind of learn because I kind of see that's where, the, that's where the quarterback room was taking me. And of course, Signetti was like, ah, you know, take him, take him. You know what I mean? Because he, he had his guys. He never, the thing is, he never seen me throw. Never seen me throw. Never seen me throw the ball at the time. And uh, so I moved over to the running backs and kind of, you know, uh, Start off a tailback. Everything was good. I was uh, right now. I was, I was considered, you know, splitting kept splitting carries with the number two guy who was a transfer for LSU. And what happened was our, we ended up having to block for each other because our uh, fullbacks, you know, getting beat up during the spring. So we started losing fullbacks like real fast. So we ended up having to start blocking for each other. And uh, I guess I was the best out of the out of the three starters, out of the three backs that was getting carries. I was the best. And uh, they started, you know, how they started, start off with a package first. Oh, we're just going to use you in a package, you know. 
And I, I believe the two running back tag is all right. I know the top's going to get on the field. So, you know, at first they started off, you know, just throwing me balls and stuff. And then what happened was everybody realized every time I come in the game, I'm getting the ball. So they're like, you got, we got to teach you how to block. You know what I mean? So I started learning how to block. I was the only guy that was willing to go in there and stick my stick my face in what they call stick your face in the fan. So, you know, learned the position and became really good at it. Started dominating at the position. I think part of that was, uh, you know, kudos to Coach uh, Powell, who was, you know, great running back coach. He coached some some great ACC running backs, yep. you know, at Pitt and at Clemson. Uh, also, Coach Browning, he spent a lot of time with me as well, who groomed me for the position. And uh, also, I would say uh, just, the, you know, my big bros in the backfield, you know what I mean, just teaching me kind of on the fly you know, how, how to play the position, you know, how to play running back and how to play fullback, kind of, you know, just having to, and you know what, playing with a good linebacker, that helps as well. You know what I mean? You start playing with really good players, playing against really good players, you know, throughout the week, you know, it's, you know, get to Saturday, you know, you got Vance Hall and Xavier Devi. So, you know, you got yeah. to be ready to roll. Yeah, you better be ready to roll. Yep. I was going to, I was going to ask you, because um, you, you came in, um, at a time where you transitioned to Butch Davis. And I know that there's a, there's a few things. Um, one, you beat my Hokies once on we Thursday did. night when we, we were, when we were ranked pretty high. So I, I wanted to see if you beat the Hokies. So you beat the we Hokies. Did. And did. then you got to a bowl game. We did. Uh, we got two. It, oh, you went to? I went to two bowl games, yeah. I didn't know if you read shirt or not. So, but the other thing is, is that you came in with Tyler Hansbro, Dan, Danny Green, the dancing machine, Danny Green, yeah. uh, Bobby Fraser, Marcus Ginyard, and another player, and then you had Taiwan Lawson on that team. So, how yeah. magic! I know where this is football, but how hey, magic! Wayne Ellison, all of them. Wayne right. Ellison. So, here's the thing, Ed Davis. Man, like, so here's the thing. So I guess, you know, I don't know why, but I guess I was one of the, I, I guess I was one of the coolest, I mean, I was a cool guy. So, you know, I was cool with everybody. So the basketball players, I was really cool with, you know, like Danny, DG, I call him DG, Danny Green, Marcus, you know, Marcus from VA. So yep. I was cool with him. Ty Lawson played AAU basketball in Virginia, DC area. So, yep. you know, I was cool with him as well. So, you know, I kind of got along with those guys pretty well. And, you know, it, it was it was a great time, man. It was a great time to be a Tar Heel, man. We the national championships. You know, watching that transition when Tyler and them came in, and, and they were freshmen, so you know, it was it was big to see them go out there and dominate. See Tyler dominate the way he did because it was like, you know, we were like, yeah, that's our class right there. You know, that's how that's how we felt. So we was we was repping yeah. real hard, man. And Tyler was, and then, you know, he was cool. Like, it was, and the thing is about Carolina, man. It's like I know people see all these guys and think they, man, it's no. None of that rock star energy there. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and, and the reason it being because, you know, you got Lawrence Taylor on one end, you got Marion <laughs> Jones on the other end, then you got Michael Jordan. Right? Jordan. <laughs> yeah. You know, so be a like, ham. Yeah, be a ham. So you, you, you're not there. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not there yet. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? So no matter how good you think you're going to be or how good you are, you're just not there yet. So we know what, you know, having that superstar mentality at Carolina just wasn't. It wasn't wasn't the thing, you know, because kid, you, any given day you can see, you know, anybody. Real quick, one of the things I realized just now is you were there with one of my boys. You know, Jimmy Gibson. Jimmy Gibson. Yo, Jim Gibson. Yeah, James, James Gibson. Yeah. James Gibson. Yeah. James Gibson. Yeah. So James, James is actually when I came in, James was just going out. He was there his last year. Was oh, okay. Four. Yeah, so when I was coming in, James was going out, but I know James really well. So he's dog power, yeah. bro. So that's my man. I, 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 dog I, I remember bro. when he was in high school at TC Williams. His dad and I played softball against him. And then for years, Jimmy and I played on the same flag football team. I was I was quarterback, and he was one of my main guys I would go to. And then on defense, couldn't nobody he'd get all the sacks. But that's my man, Jimmy. I know you're gonna watch this, man. Um, yeah, James. He, James he was at Shannon Door coaching. Last year, and now he's over. Uh, he's got a high school job. Right. He's good man. Look, great guy, man. Great guy. He's one of the guys that kind of embraced me, you know, from the beginning. So, you know, I always call him Big Bro. You know what I mean? He's definitely Big Bro. He's always been a mm -hmm. big time mentor. You know what I mean? Especially, 
at the fullback position because he was a walk on that actually played. So, you know, yeah, I wasn't a walk on, but you know, he just showed me that that was the standard. Like he got on the field, like, okay, I gotta play. I gotta, I gotta, yeah. I gotta play. And like I said, I ended up starting fifty what, 49 or 50 games. So Right. So <laughs> We um, actually, Rusty, this isn't a bad momentum kind of going backwards because we were talking off camera about how you grew up in the 757 and uh, the Peninsula. The, yeah, you were a big Peninsula District fan. Right, but right. You also came up at a time with, you said you were born in 86, where you right. were idolizing like Ronald Curry. You said you right. know Bobby Blizzard, who was a UNC Kentucky back and forth, and right. Michael Vick and all those great players. That Ronya Whitaker was over in North. Right, 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 right. Tyrod was right behind you. So you said your dad used to take you over to Darling Stadium. Tell us about growing up in that great era. Man, you know what? And that's the thing, man. Like, you know, I didn't have to go to the Peninsula District every week to find great football, man. You can find great football anywhere. Oh, yeah. At Booger T, the teams that Booger T had at the time, you know, they had the Kevin Fullers and all, you know, they had Kevin, you know, you had Ryan Hill, what if you know that late tell you late teller, North yep. had the studs, Ottawa Anderson and all them. So yep. uh Daniel Pierce. So, I mean, you, you didn't have to go, you know, to the peninsula to find the talent, but mm -hmm. you knew where that you knew where it was at. You know what I mean? Now you know, this, I would say, you know, the Hampton Rose area definitely, I mean, I mean, Norfolk, you know, you know, that, that, that they had some talent there. But when I wanted to go, you know, my dad wanted me to see the best and the best of the best. And uh, I, I'll never forget it. You know, I, I was like, man, seven or eight, man, maybe eight years old when I found out about Curry for the first time. And uh, that's for the first time I read a newspaper. You know, my dad was like, here, read this. Yeah, like, I don't read no newspaper. That's what old people do. You know what I mean? Because my dad, was, <laughs> you know, that's my dad was always holding the paper up, reading it. So it was yep. the first time I ever read the newspaper, and I just kind of from there I was like, "Wow, who is this guy, Ronald Curry?" You know, I gotta know who he is. I gotta, I gotta go to all his games, and you know, I just became as as the super fan of his, and like you know, in the Peninsula District in general, because I would just remember all the names, of all the players, and stuff like that mm -hmm. as they were playing. Man, it was just. Yeah, it was nice. So, you know, I became I, – I'm, I'm, I think I'm a bigger football fan than, you know what I mean, than the people think, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm actually a fan of people and they don't even know, you know what I mean? Right. They, and the truth is they didn't even have to get out the backyard, you know what I mean? I'm a, but, but I'm a fan football That's fan. how we got to doing this because we grew up going to Darling Stadium and we're watching these guys. I mean, and some of them are older, but these guys I actually played with – like I might have been a sophomore, or, or or say I was in ninth grade, and I was just go eighth grade watching him in the game. And then next thing, like Creighton and Comenius, another UNC guy, you know, he he's been on our show, and I played with him. And I'm like, I Carl Watts. I mean, my my that class eighty five at Bethel, incredible talent. But my point is, like, I went to those games, and I you know be there on a Friday or a Saturday under those lights. And then the tradition of that Hampton Bethel game back then, man, it made me have a desire and love for sports, man, that is just un unbelievable, you know? Yeah, man, I'm going to tell you, man, the Hampton Rose area, man, it, it'll humble you really fast, you know what I mean? I, I'll i never forget that um, when I went to go see Percy play for the – I understand, I played against Percy. We scrim well, play, we scrimmaged Percy, and, like, I mean, I mean, when I'm talking about blowing up the scoreboard, man, like, you know, me and T.J. Mitchell lit it up, you know, we lit up, lit up the okay. scoreboard. Yeah, I mean, we lit it up out there that day. And, like, people still talk about that game to this day because it, it was a scrimmage, you know what I mean? And then the following year, it was, you know, we had Macho Harris out there, ourselves, and Percy Harvest all on the same field, you know what I mean? So it was wow. – yeah, Chris Bell as well that was out there. It was a top five receiver in the country as well. Dane McDaniel was out there as well. So, you I mean, he had all this talent on the field at one time, you know, going head-to-head and -head uh, obviously <coughs> – most humblest thing, most humblest thing I've seen was I remember watching Percy Harvest play, and Percy was younger than me. You know, he was young, he was like a year younger than me. And I'm watching this dude, and I said, "Man, he 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 might be better than me, man." Like, and I'm talking <laughs> about like 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 I'm like you know what I mean? And, and I, I'm talking about I'm a full scholarship, you know, D1 athlete, and I'm looking at this kid like, "Whoa, man!" Like he's on a whole other level. You know what I mean? And I'm like, man, you know, I scored touchdowns and I made it look easy. I didn't make it look that easy. You know what I mean? Like, this man, <laughs> he did make it look easy, man. And so it was like, you know, it, it was like a whole different level. And, and I would tell you, man, that's, and it really humbled me. It really humbled me, you know, to say, you know what? 
it's some it's some ball players coming out of here, man. And, and, yeah. And I, I, you know what I'm saying, man? You always gonna be a fan. Of, I mean, if you're a good player, even if you're a good player, man, you are gonna be a fan of somebody. Like I said, yeah. these players, you know, didn't play at no school. I'm I'm big time fans of, and I'll yell out all day long. So you know, yep. that's the seven five seven for you, man. We know we got all these folklores. So. Right. And oh, you've yeah. got you've got some guys from um our area in the coaching ranks now that have been oh, yeah. you mentioned coach Bobby Blizzard over at Norfolk oh, State. Uh, talk about in the in the coaching ranks, there's a lot of guys coaching now, you know. Well, you know, we got we got Bobby Blizzard, you know, he's a he, you know, he's at Norfolk State right now. He's the uh running backs coach. He was also, you know, offensive coordinator in the XFL and offensive coordinator in the AAF league. So he played under some big time name head coaches. And he called he, he called plays for how homie and top five offense in the country, uh, like three like, like five three years in a yeah, row. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So I mean, Bobby's an amazing coach. You got Ronald Curry, you know, over at uh in New Orleans Saints. You know what I mean? New Orleans, Orleans right? Yeah, quarterback right. coach over quarterback there. Coach. You, know, you know, outstanding. You know, outstanding football mind. You know what I mean? Outstanding football mind. Uh, you got a few other guys from the area also who, who's out here coaching. Man, I. Man, look what they're doing at Maury. That, that, that coaching staff over at Maury. You know what I mean? Just Coach McCain's been on our show. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Mike, Mike Privet, and uh, look at the coaching staff over there at Kidsville. Man, look, I would tell y'all something, man. The coaching staffs out like, right now, you know, that, that that's that's in our area now are, are some of the best that the, the yeah. state has, has had in years. You know what I mean? And I'm yeah. talking about yeah, they got legitimate staffs now. They got some great men leading those programs, man. So, mm-hmm. you know, football is in good hands in the Hamilton Rose area for sure, man. And, and I think the, the, the number one thing, the hardest thing probably, man, is keeping that talent here, man. You know, the higher the competition now, the, in the way the scholarships are very scarce now. So, the, the seemingly like the higher the competition, you know, guys are only offering guys that are playing at the top, 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 top. Yeah. Down there playing the yeah. What, what, what? That's what we've experienced with my son, who was going to all of these, you know, recruiting trips. And it's like the four and five stars are the ones getting those offers. And yeah. so I'm like, because of the transfer portal and so many things going on, you know, but let me, okay, so let me, but that could be a whole nother show, coach. Yeah. <laughs> we, I mean, yeah. You know, that's, a, that's probably a good thing for you. We'll just leave it there, but that's a good thing for you. It is, it is, but you know, and they, they, some kids are in the portal for a reason. So let's let all those yeah. talk talk about that too. And I, you know, sometimes, man, you know, and I'm gonna be honest, and I, I just speaking candidly, you know, what I mean, if I, you know, I can't sit here and act like, you know, I didn't want to leave Carolina when I first got there, and it's just being homesick, just feeling like, you know, everything was just wasn't going, things weren't going my way, you know what I mean? But I had a dad that was telling me, you ain't going nowhere. You know what I mean? You gonna fight, you gonna fight, and you gonna compete. And look, it's the forty nine out of fifty games I'm starting. You understand what I'm saying? In a, yep. totally, in a totally different position I was recruited in. So some of these guys gotta actually stick their situation, stick their yeah. situation out and see what happens. You know what I mean? You never know what you're gonna develop in once you're in a strip and conditioning program. Like you, you don't want to be the same player you were in high school and think you just yeah. Gonna- when you're eating, you're getting you're getting stronger. Yeah. You're still, yeah. Some people. Some people are were young when they got there, 16, yeah, 17 just years give old. Some, I think just gotta give, some student athletes got to give it some time, man. I just don't think they, they give their stuff enough time to develop before they jump to the next, you know, to the other coach that was telling them, man, you could come play. You could have came play for me, but now yeah, as well, he have been developed somebody else better than you. Now you need to jump to another school where you felt like you might have been, you know, you was, you was probably the candy of this coach. I when he was recruiting you, but now – He's developed somebody. He's actually spent a year with somebody. He's developed this kid. This kid knows how he you know knows how he likes to practice. And now you're transferring in, and think you're gonna come take his spot. And guess what? You end up in the same position. And now yeah. we, we're repeating the same cycle over and over again. Now I have seen situations where you know sometimes transferring, you know, you, sometimes you got to do what's best for you. You know what I mean? And right now, this era of college football is literally an options-driven era. You know what I mean? And that's okay. Mm-hmm. We, we got to adjust as coaches at universities. You know, we got to do the adjusting. Yeah. And, and like I said, I, I don't. I don't think it's wrong for giving kids options. But at the same time, I just as as a former student athlete, not not taking my coaching hat off as a former student athlete, I wish some of these guys would compete a little bit more and fight for their job a little bit harder. Because you know, the truth is, let's just put football aside. You know, once you get through the four years of high school, you know, get through the four years of college. And life gets much harder than competing for a starting job at your, at your university. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We you know. know. I mean? So if you're folding up right now, you love football, man. 
man, I feel sorry for you when it's when that when, when life when life ready to smack you in the right. face. You, it man, ends for all, all of us, man. At yeah, some man, point, it is looking at you. So, you know, I just want guys to you know tough that out a little bit, man. Like you know, tough it out, man. Fight a little bit, man. I know. No, I did not go to Carolina. No, I did not play quarterback in Carolina, but I did. Got to do that. Came out I, with a high passer rate, you know. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's I think it's worse in basketball actually because they're they're like if they're going to get five more minutes. But I will say that you know knowing coaches, high school coaches, since you know keeping in touch with like the older coaches and then the newer coaches, there are some big names that were homesick and almost left school. Michael Vick admits to it um, in his oh, 30 for 30. Yeah, he, oh, went, he, he, did, he was out in the country, you know, he was out in the country. And then there's some players I can't say that I know started shopping around and they ended up being all-time greats at their schools and they were thinking about leaving. But uh, so to, to close out, Coach, um, let's just talk. Hold about on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. I, why are we, I know we're going to do some, some more. Pro- just, I, and Coach, you do not have to set yourself up where people don't like your answer, but this. I, I, I am proud to say I toted the rock, you know, on, in the Peninsula District. Wherever I go, like, I, I, I talk about football. I have I'm here in the DMV. And people will say, we talk about the best areas around the country. And, you know, there was this big pool. Uh, for UVA, Virginia Tech, say, hey, you got to keep you got to keep the kids in the state. You got to go self find right. something. Let me ask you, this. I, I wherever I go, people will talk about how great football is in Florida, but we can compete. I mean, we're a little smaller because for most, you're talking about it's not Southern Florida is is, is dynamic, but not the whole state. But coach, it, if you could, where are we when you line us up with Florida, South Florida? All right. I, okay. I think we got to be realistic about this. And when I, when I say that is because, you know, we just got. Hey, Andy Rose got, football boy going to eat you up. If you no, 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 no. We just got middle school football not too long ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. We yeah, just I got know, middle school football not too long ago. We, you know, they're playing football for, man, they, they doing seven man year football, round. seven on seven. They, right. They're doing it all year round. So it's, it's a different type of mentality out here, man. And, and, and another thing, you know, kids can go to any school they want to out there. So what I mean, you know, they're, they're being shot and recruited from, you know, first to go to certain high schools and stuff, man. Yeah. And, and so when I when I look at it, man, when I look at the landscape of it, you know, you know, we we just don't have the type of trees they got down there, man. These those boys are I mean when I, I, I just couldn't. My mouth fell open. The type of stuff they got. To, like, yeah. you know, my my coach told me he had forty two seniors in his class. I said, "What?" Yeah. So, he, 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 somebody yeah. point out, coach. Forty two seniors. <laughs> so, Miami Dade is the third largest school district in the United States. So, yes. and, and and Coach Rome is not that far from Southern Broward County. So when that comes yes. into play, so when we talk about LT, Bruce Smith, or whatever, you're talking yes. about Ray Lewis, Jim Kelly, Ted Hendricks, Sean um, Taylor, Taylor, Ed Reed. Um, you just, it goes on and on. Kenny Phillips, uh, just so many great players. And when most of them, Michael Irvin, you know. We're I just famous. say my Andy, we got Florida State in Florida. I'm just talking about Miami Dade County. County, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he I'm doesn't even have to go up to Palm Beach. Yeah, he doesn't even have to go up to Palm Beach. Look, one of the biggest things that helped Virginia Tech football was when they turned from an independent and they were in the Big East, and it allowed them to go down there and they were recruit. Miami, they were in the same conference with Miami, and since. Miami, Florida State joined the Big East and the ACC, and, and especially together, like it weakened that talent because people, they were now everybody's going down to Florida getting. Now they got plenty. Of, they got plenty of resources of kids, but a kid say, "Well, I'm not. Why would I go sit behind all these guys at Miami when I could get some run at Virginia Tech?" And, that, and that's, that's that's what he's not going for. But y'all gotta look at it like this, man. Not only is Miami down there, you got Florida International down there, you got Florida Atlantic. Florida Atlantic. Down. Florida yeah. Atlantic's bigger too. Yeah, you got all that sitting right there in that small yep. pocket. Yeah. You know what I mean? And on top of that, you know, so I mean, 
it, it is. I mean, it's it's that much talent to feed those universities, though. On top, yeah. and it's enough talent to feed all these universities across the country. So when you look at the, the you look at the, uh, the Toledo's and look at the Kent State, I, I challenge you to go look at their roster. They're full yeah. of South Florida kids. I mean, full of. Oh South yeah, Florida. yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, they they get them they get them a steal. You know what I mean? Because these kids want to go. They these kids want to stay in Miami. You know what I mean? When they don't get those offers from. You know, to you and stuff like that. Guess what? They they, they don't know nothing. They don't know a Toledo. They don't know. We, Bush Davis was man. Bush Davis, man. Look, when Coach Davis was at Carolina, he decided to go down to Miami and bring back South Florida, bring back some guys. I don't know what he brought back, but that kid Kevin Brown, this dude was like four ten, six eight, doing dips like. <laughs> we were like what in the world was like? They was just a different breed of animals, man. Like players or whatnot, but it was just. And I just think South Florida in general, because they play football year round, you know what I mean? They're just a little, a little far advanced. That's it. When you talk about year round, that's right. We just changed our rules a couple of years ago. You know, I mean, that we could even do outside of that football season, even do anything. So, like, our coach, he made us run track, you know. But, like, now at least the coaches after, like, December can work with you. And it's still, we're still too limited. We're still too limited in terms of we are, one is we don't have the weather that we can just be outside the whole time. Because I, I also coach track, I coach football and track. But man, when I'm playing, when we're running against Texas, California, and Florida, it, mm-hmm. I, I mean, just said, my wife was an all-state athlete um, in in uh, at Lake Braddock, led to five state championships. She ran track in Maryland, but she lived in Texas before she moved up here in tenth grade. And she, in Texas, she said I was average. I was good, but she had team in her middle school team. They had people that went on the late on the Tennessee, went ran all over the LSU, and she came to Virginia, went to Lake Braddock, and dominated, and dominated. <laughs> but 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 she said, I remember saying, I said, did you run indoor and outdoor track? She said, it's no such thing as indoor. It's just track because we don't. It's not cold. We don't need to be inside. We just ran track, you know. And that's how I mean. That's how it is down there. I think a lot of us just gotta understand, man. Like. It's the thing is, it's it's so many kids, you know, that go to these schools, and these schools are so close together. So I mean, it is so many, it's so condensed, man. And it's like, you know, you might be at a high school and have twenty kids in your position group, you know, and that's at every single yeah. high school across the board. So I think, you know, when you look at that, you know, when you look at that, it's like. I mean, you try to compare it to Virginia, where we, we're struggling, to, you know, to, to put thirty kids on a varsity sometimes. Yeah. Know? Oh yeah. So you know, it's just it just isn't you know it isn't the same. And I I don't know why that is. I don't know why people, the numbers drop football wise in Virginia. I don't know. I don't know why that is. But I would say uh, you know, but I still believe in the talent that Hampton Rose there. That's why I recruited. And like I said, I put my money where my mouth is. I actually still recruit the area heavily. We know. Yeah, so it's not so it's not like I don't think they can't play with those guys. Like they, I don't think they can develop. I think I to be honest, I think they can come down here and uh and, and tra- you know, because we've always, you know, we've come there, we come to places and we 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 become the best, you know, we, we become the Michael Vicks, you know what I mean? We come we yeah. go to different yeah. places and we come to Percy Harvest like he was in Florida. You know, that's flash, you know what I mean? So it's, it's it, you know, it's no doubt in my mind a kid from the Hamlet Rose area couldn't come down in Miami and do the same. But, you know, do they have that splash in Miami? Oh yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah, like I said, for me, I'll be, you know, for me, I'll be telling the story if I didn't say it. You know, I seen it the first day on the job at, at uh, Florida Memorial. You know, my corners, both my corners were six one and six two. I said, oh my goodness, you know what I mean? I was like, wow. Yeah. I, like, I said, son, can you run? I said, I'm like, what a four three. I'm like, what? You know what I mean? Like, why are you? You know, but it's that's just they. I mean, they come down a dozen down there. You know what I mean? Like that's the truth. That is the truth. You know what I mean? And, yeah. It's all about you know exposure and who's been seen and who hasn't been seen, you know. And you've got you've got a lot to sell in the fact that, you know, that's a hotbed for football, but you're the only HBCU down there. And then a lot of people don't realize if they have not spent time in Miami, even though Miami um is not huge in population. It's a very international city, and it's got a lot going on. I was down there for Speed Week with the Grand Prix when everybody was coming in. And if you haven't been to Miami, it's very different. It's a very cool, glamorous, cultural place. You've got all that to sell. And, you know, Florida's got plenty of kids. And, you know, I was just looking up the number of players from NIA 
in a in a in a IA and Division Three who have gone pro: Jim Thorpe, Ken Anderson, Sam Mills, uh, London Fletcher. I mean, there's quite a few guys out there, so you've got that. So you know, we think the future's bright. So Rusty, we um, we're famous for you know talking, but why don't we transition to always our our favorite little cultural part that people say they like to get and i'll let you lead it because we're we're about an hour and 10 minutes right now no man we i told you coach we we, we once we when we got a great guest we we can't help it you know we go we go over that 50 minute mark easy man i appreciate it like i said i, like I, said, I well you we know you had that passion for russia get that passion for russia and i was just looking i was like we talked about russia for too long <laughs> but this is straight up no i've never met you but you feel like home, like your home. Oh, yeah. like, we just, yeah, yeah, like, that's yeah. what I was saying. Like I can sit beside you in a game yeah. and we that's just what we do said. this. That's what we, we talking like, you know? And so, I mean, that, that's what, that, like, that's what this, this show is all about. And if we met I mean, you, yeah, if we would have met you like at a camp, like they had uh, Hampton Roads Youth Foundation camp, if we met you and we were sitting down, we would probably would, would talk the same way, but Rusty, why don't you do yeah. some of our so, fun so, cultural questions? We're, we're going to try to get through some of these. Uh, first, I, I, before we do that, I do want to, in case you want to give a shout out, is there anybody that was a mentor to you growing up? I don't know. You mentioned your father, but I don't know if there's anyone else that, that what you kind of looked up to or served as a mentor. And then the next thing I just want to ask you is, um, where do you see your program? Short answer, in five to ten years. Okay. Well, uh, <clears throat> Um, with regards to mentor wise, you know, I, I, I mean, like I said, I know I spoke about him earlier. My dad, I, and the reason why I say he just, I mean, like I say, he's everything, you know what I mean? He's been everything for me as far as, you know, mentor, leader, you know what I mean? My best friend, the guy that's, you know, he's still, he's still raising me to this day, you know what I mean? He's yeah. still, he's, he, and I would say, you know, just, you know, the tough car, he's not afraid to have the tough conversations and stuff like that. So I would say my dad, you know, I couldn't give nobody else that role. But there's been a lot of people that probably have a hand on me getting to where I'm at now just because and they probably don't even know it. Just 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 in passing. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I owe that to a lot of people. Uh, a lot of coaches, Lonnie Blow, uh, Dave Hudak, um, uh, Tommy Staples, you know, those are just my high school coaches to name a few. Um and coaches I didn't play for, James Cotton, you know what I mean? Uh, Hank Sawyer, you know what I mean? Over at Lake Teller, that's my dog right there. Uh, and uh, a few other, it means Mike Smith, a few other guys, you know, just, just coaches yeah. in general. That's always, you know, reached out to me, has always supported me. And, uh, and Coach Stone, you know, has always shown me love. So at Booker T, so I mean, those guys have always shown me love. And like I said, I've just been always been appreciative. Of it. And as far as what my program, I thought my program would be in the next five or 10 years. Uh, I, I mean, I, now of course, you know, but the resource that, that's being poured into our program, I mean, we're, I, mean I, I would hope we expect the national championship, you know what I mean? Yeah, national, there you yeah, go. National championship program, uh, especially being in South Florida. And, uh, and, and to be honest, I mean, who doesn't want to be a Division One football program? You know what I mean? But you heard that yeah. from me. Yeah, say it. You ain't scared. No, nah, we're not scared. We're not, we not scared. We're not scared to put that out there, you know what I mean? But at the same time, we got some work to do behind. We got some work to do as well. But, you know, we dream big at, at FMU, so. Man, so thank you. That's a great, great answer. I'm glad to, we got a chance to ask that. Let me ask you this. Do you, we, we'd like to get into, like, some of the things outside of just sports. But Do you have a favorite movie? And it doesn't have to be a football movie. But do you have right. a favorite movie of all time? Or is it anything that you're streaming on Netflix or or – or anything Man, Hulu. I, the truth is, I don't get much time to watch anything, so I don't really watch. Yeah, I, I believe I figured that. But at the same time, when I, you know, well, I mean, used to watch movies, you know, you know, Friday until I started getting played out on, on USA every day. You know, that was one of my favorite movies. You know, yeah. growing up, I love a good comedy. You know, I mean, I love Big Worm. Yeah, Big Worm. Love, love a good Debo. comedy. Debo. Debo. I also, but you know what? I also love a good, um, a good, a good drama. You know, good drama. Good. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. some good drama movie as well, man. I also love any movie that got anything to do with weather. You know, anything that got anything to do with weather, I'm all over it. You know? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So. Hurricanes, tornadoes, whatever, I'm all over it. So. Okay, coach. That you you hit what my, now I, I, I just asked my 17 year old son this today. My wife asked him, said, we said, what's your favorite movie all the time? And he was like, Friday. Because <laughs> we made sure we exposed him to it. Like, 
It he was heard, funny, funny, man. He I, had I got heard us saying these phrases his whole life. Now he knew what we meant. We said, bye, Felicia. He now he know <laughs> where he came. I, I, I mean, what can I say? I grew up watching the movie. I mean, my, you know, I remember watching it with my parents yeah. the first time they, I've seen it, and it was just, I just couldn't stop laughing, man. Like, I could not yeah. stop laughing at the characters and stuff. So I fell in love with it, man. Like I said, it's been man, something that's always been a staple. Well, well, after my son turned 17, we exposed him, I think, in the same weekend to Friday and Boys in the Hood. Okay. <laughs> I like Boys in the Hood too. I love Boys in the Hood. So. Men- Menace to Society is bad. I like, I like. Juice, I like Juice. Now you got the Juice. All right, so here we go. <laughs> All right, so, like so Coach, next. you. I think you've already maybe answered this, um, but we got the last two questions we're going to end on are this. One is, who is in your phone that if you texted them, they'd hit you back and we might find it interesting to say, oh, you know such and such. Okay. It doesn't have to be a famous person. Okay, but I'll, if I'll, it's I'll, somebody, not not famous, but I think so, because we, we probably don't have any. I mean, people wouldn't think we have any connection just based on because uh you know who he is and who I am. Uh, Quincy Carter. Oh, yeah, quarterback. Yeah, Quincy Cowboys, Carter. Yeah. Georgia, Georgia yeah, Tech. Oh, yeah, yeah, Cowboys. Y'all cross yeah, paths. That's my dog, man. Like, yeah, that's my dog. Yeah, uh, Quincy's my dog. Yeah, so. You know, I, I talk to him all the time, man. We always encourage each other, man. You know, you know, always texting each other or you know, picking up the phone, just calling, see how we each other doing and stuff. And, and I just think it's just the way. You know, I grew up. Well, I grew up as a fan of Quincy or whatnot. And just yeah, grew up watching him and stuff. So it's kind of funny to see now. You know what I mean? Me and him going, you know, talking and stuff on the phone. So it's, that's probably the person that you would say. And I got, I got another one also. People don't even know. One of my closest friends, like closest, closest friends, and the people don't know, like a lot of people don't even know this because because of the industry that we work in is uh Jamal Hawkins. My oh sports. snap. From what is, what's yeah, Jamal Hawkins? Like, me and Jamal, me and Jamal, me and Jamal went to high school together, you know, we play high school basketball oh. together. So we, we're very close, like we we're very, very close, very close. And and you know, because you know, we, he works in the media and I'm a I'm a coach or whatnot. A lot of people don't get to, you know, see that how close that we actually are, you know what I mean, outside of like just, you know, media work and stuff like that. Cause you know, he's interviewed me before and stuff like that, but we're actually like really good friends. So so that so, I would so, him so uh, and my last question is gonna be, coach, if now, I'm, I'm gonna t- also finish on what you just said. I I Kirk coordinated this. A lot of this, and we spoke through email and messenger. But I got to get your phone number. So I, when people ask me that question, I, don't I, can, say, either. I can text Coach Bobby Rome. You know, formerly of Florida Memorial, now um, of the, uh, the 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 Las Vegas Raiders. That's my dog. That's my man. <laughs> Two exactly. times Super Bowl champion. <laughs> well, whatever. Give, him, I, 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 give I, him a few more years. He's gonna have some yeah, South yeah, Florida yeah. people. I mean, no, Florida Memorial. He ain't going nowhere right now. Right. But we right. know. You know, Appreciate just like it. Tomlin, Mike Tomlin, you know, he he was he, he's from my area and his brother Eddie and I we we all uh, played against each other and we took some girls out on a double date and stuff. But I can I, I can hit some people up too. All okay, right, last man. one, coach. Okay. You have been blessed with five billion dollars. Five billion dollars. All right. And that that's maybe the after taxes or whatever, but you got five billion. What you gonna do with that? Man, I, I think I would. I, I think I would have to do something like build my own university. Mm. And I like that. Big, uh, build build my own university, and and then uh, you know just just have something structured, you know, that, that help everybody. Because I when I look at a university, I look at a place a resource, a light of resources. You know what I mean? They have yeah, internet, they have computers, they have places to live, they have place food. They provide, you know, what I mean, they provide so much. For our community in general, that people kind of take for granted, they don't get, they don't, they don't really, you know, think about it till after it's gone. You know what I mean? With that, with that, with that, that calf, that calf is gone. You know, you don't think about that stuff, and and just the memory yeah. that you get on a university and then the growth that I think students get when they're on a university. I think it got to be me investing in purchasing a university and kind of, you know, doing it. I guess uh, ways I would like to do it. Wrong you. Know? you. 
wrong yeah. for you. <laughs> yeah, so like I don't know. I don't know if it'd be wrong for you. It'd probably be kind of revitalizing one of these other HBCUs or something like yeah, that. Yeah, no, hey, look, man, we we don't even know who Howard is. I think he's actually white, but that Howard, you know, we just say Howard. You know, we're gonna we just gonna be saying Rome. We're just gonna say Rome. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, I, I when I do when I do that, I'm thinking about just this, you know, just the how many people it could take, a, you know, could take advantage of that, and yeah. the number of families that it affect, you know, across the board and stuff. And I, you know, and, and make it in a situation where, you know, I, you know, we need a university where kids, you know, kids can get in, you know what I mean, and and, and yeah. you know, set, kind of second check. You know, the truth is, you know, kids, so a lot of these kids don't don't get, don't have a shot. They just don't have a shot. And this is based on just their surrounding their foundation and stuff. So they just need somebody that can speak to that and understand where they're coming from. And, you know, I believe I can help with that. So uh, it would be a university. It would be a university. That's um, all right, bro. That is great. Football, answer, yeah. Good. Well, hey, man, we're, we're proud of you. And you've got, you. you know, you may not have $5 billion, but you got an opportunity now to help a lot of young people. And yeah. you know, I know a little bit about Miami and where you are. There are plenty of young people that, uh, you know, football can be a way out, but an education can be, you know, is much more likely to serve them. And uh, I always tell kids, why do you want to go straight to work? You know, you can go to school, get yourself an education, and then, uh, uh, you know, not everybody, we know the percentages for people that uh, play Division One football, let alone play, play pro football. But uh, this has been a lot of fun, Coach Rome. Oh, yeah. Really appreciate you coming on, and uh, yeah, we will we will see you um, doing well in the fall. And uh, we're we're hearing chirps up here about you recruiting up here too. By the way, so. I recruit I recruit everywhere, man. But especially, man, I always take care of home. Everybody know that they know I'm always going to take care of home. So you know, yep. I love I love my VA guys. I love my seven five seven guys in particular. So they know I'm gonna come. They know I'm coming to see them. So. You know, I, I, I told you I got a rising senior, and we're trying to figure out our schedule for the Falls place. Whenever I got a frat brother who has a crib, uh, he's paid. He's got a crib on the beach in Miami at South Beach. He just man. bought it, and so I I got to come down and see. Yeah, put me on, man. Check, we got to <laughs> check out one of your games. You got to meet my bro. He got yeah. he maybe he can maybe help out your your you know he he went to uh, Alabama State, but he's. Was a okay. We work in the State Department. He's a diplomat, frat, alpha, good dude. Um, nice. But I, I, he been telling me I got to get down there, so I might have to coordinate that with one of your games and uh, and check you out, bro. I'm looking forward to it, man. I get you know Monday I meet with Ted Lucas, the owner of Slip and Slide Records, so I get to meet. Oh, with him. yeah, I get to meet with him, man. And uh, you know, and it, you know, he wants to meet with me, and I so he. I was shocked. Like, Coach, you have rumors? Like, of course, we're going to clear all this stuff, man. We come <laughs> meet with him, man. I want to, I want to, I mean, Sleep and Slide Records big time, man. Trick Daddy. Yeah, Uncle about Luke, too. Luke, Uncle Luke. Luke. Oh, oh, that's another, that's another, that's my dog, too. So I, but I knew Luke before I got down here. I, I recruited one of Luke guys up in, uh, uh, from his, did he, Ohio, like one of his youth folk programs? Yeah, he's at, he's at Edison right now. Edison, he's the head coach at Edison. So I, I know Luke. Uh -huh. I, I know big. I know Luke. I recruited some of his players uh, at Central State while I was at Central State. So, oh wow, okay. Yeah, man. I, I man, I, he just gave me a stud office alignment, man. Three star office alignment. They originally committed to Georgia Tech. Yeah, man. So Luke took me. Okay. Luke, yeah, Luke, Luke my dog. Man. Uh, hey, look. <laughs> I, 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 I'm definitely coming down to, to Miami now, yeah, and, and I'm a big dog. Dan Levitard show fan. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you listen to his podcast, but it's a great show, man. Yeah, I'll check it out. I'll definitely check it out, man. Thank you guys for having me, man. I'm, I feel blessed to be on, man. Always good to be, have a good conversation with guys from home, man. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah, it felt like I was back in the 757 for a little bit, and I'm just thankful to you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Man, let us know, let and, us know so, when you're back up here. Definitely. I will. Man, I will. You, you have really blessed us. And, and for those that, like, this man is legit just a great guy, man. Like, you know, he doesn't we, – we, there's a discussion board where people talk about a lot of football, and he clearly knows more than 100% of the people on there. But he's just giving facts. But that's how we met, you know, just speaking on on a topic or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, I looked you up. I'm like, oh, snap. I, I, I remember the name. I didn't know it was the same person. Yeah, but man, man. So you – Bruh, I, I'm pulling for you. I'm praying for you. I'm happy it. for you, man. If you ever need to come back on here and promote something, let me know. Um, yeah, but just keep doing your thing, man, and God will continue to bless you. 
and your your team, your family, and uh, just again, I can't can't say enough about the things you're doing and, um, that make us very proud. Thank you. And like I said, I also would be remiss if I don't, you know, shout out my boys, you know, my, my, my guys from the chat, you know, my guy Red, who actually invited me on the chat. That's my dog right there. Red. Red. Oh. Yeah, Red, Coach Red. That's my dog and my, my dog, Chris Curry. That's my that's my other dog. And so those okay. are the guys, you know, when you talk about people I talk, those are the guys, you know, that's that's pretty much a circle of people I, I converse with on a, you know, on a daily basis or whenever, you know, we talking football, just talking football in general. They, they, they'll pick up the phone and call me. I'll pick up the phone and call them. I respect their opinions. You know what I mean? And, and like I said, Red, you know, Red be everywhere. So, yeah, you know, he's always calling me when he's somewhere. So, yep. they on the treadmill or something. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, look, man. Hey, look. This how you, y'all, y'all check this out now. This how you know some of my takes are legit. I have made comments, and Coach Bobby Rome has liked my comments. I'm like, bam! I know what I'm, I must know what I'm talking about. He liked my comment. Boom! I appreciate it, man. I appreciate yeah. it. I appreciate it. All right, I, bro. I don't date nobody, man. I ain't, I, I'm just only having fun. So, hey, you're 35, man. Hang, hang tight. Hang tight. Hey, you cut your teeth in Russia, man. St. Petersburg. You're a young guy. You got a bright future, man. We're looking forward to it. All right, Coach? Thank you. I really hey, good luck with this season, man. God bless you guys. Have a good God bless you. Take us okay. out, Rusty. Take us out. All right. That's been the Kirk and Bird Show with Coach Bobby Rome this second. Kirk and Birder, out. <laughs>